Hello Nippies, welcome back to the channel and if you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Nips, a freelance artist and today we're going to be working on week three of Inktober and for those of you that don't know, I'm so sorry, I've been holding on to this video for so long, you guys know that I have week one and two done of Inktober 2021 and week four doesn't have a speed paint, but there will be a sketchbook tour of this uh, coming after this video soon. So hopefully you look forward to that. But I've been holding on to this because I've been traveling and I moved to another country. I now live in Serbia and we changed editors. Our new editor, Justin, whose link you can check in the description down below, has been helping us create more consistent content. So I'm really happy about that. Go check them out if you can. And for those of you that don't know, Inktober is just a really fun event every year um, during the month of October where artists get together and draw daily. And it's just really fun. And so for this, I'm going to be working on an orihon, which is basically kind of like a, it's a Japanese accordion book. And what I did was I decided to do my characters for the whole book. And what ended up happening was First, I started with just ballpoint pen and grayscale and a brush pen and I decided to keep it really simple. And of course, you know, sometimes you just go wild and you lose the plot. Yeah. And not only that, but I sometimes like I, I couldn't get myself to do a day like I would skip it or I like overslept, forgot, like just all of these things. And then I kind of came up with this thing. I think I mentioned it in the other two videos. I, I'm so sorry if I do. It's been a while since I did a voiceover for one of these, so. Um, but yeah, and so I started doing like themed sets. And so you'll see here, I'm working on a theme set for week three. And I, I definitely started straying away from the black and white brush pen. You'll see that I kind of did it on the right there. Sometimes I kept the theme, sometimes I didn't, but I kind of really just started having fun with these. I decided not to constrain myself too much to like making them all look the same and just like I need to use black and white for everything and use the same tools. So for this one, I was just really feeling blue ballpoint pen and just really, really neon yellow colors. And um, the characters here we have on the left, I'm working on Alvin. And then in the middle we have Jet. And then on the right, we're gonna have Saskia. And I wanted to just do like, not like entirely lewd, but just more like body focused drawings. And I've noticed that a lot of the times when I'm working too hard, to like get good lines, I just lose like the flow of drawings so quickly. And I think that's one of the things that I really liked about how I decided to approach this Inktober was like, just keep it really loose, fun. It's just quicker and the drawings just have so much more flow when you're not so worried about getting exact lines and getting, you know, everything super clean. Um, even with like quote unquote mistakes, they kind of become like happy mistakes. And even if they don't look as good as you want them to, like not everything has to be perfect. And as long as you did it and you got something out of it, you know, you practiced experience. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I I'm such like a, a results oriented artist. Like if the, if the result does not pan out the way that I want it, I essentially wasted my time and I get super sad, depressed, like why did I even bother? I'm so bad and blah, blah, blah. And I think I've definitely mentioned this before where I'm just trying to enjoy the process more than the result. And this like Inktober was an attempt to do that. Where if I just limit myself in the materials that I'm using and only use like sketchy type styles, then maybe I'm more likely to just not worry too much and just have fun. And it kind of, it, it definitely like worked out. I ended up choosing a, a ballpoint pen because ballpoint pens are just so good for like different levels of opacity. 
in kind of a, a quote unquote like permanent medium, yeah? So I, I did, I was using another pen, the pen that you guys see on the right from week two. If you guys wanna check that video, I'll put it in the top right. And also I put the, I'll put the other videos in the description down below as well. And um, yeah, and that one doesn't have, it, it's more like a gel pen. And so it doesn't have like a lot of opacity though. Sometimes if you use like the, the gel pens and the more like liquid, more liquidy ink pens, if you use a thin enough one, you'll definitely get uh, a lighter, more kind of uh, see-through opacity if you just do your stroke really fast. So you, it's still achievable, but it's definitely much easier with a ballpoint pen. And I think there was something really fun about like going over the ballpoint pen because most of those are not waterproof and getting kind of like this little like smudged bled like uh like just different sort of texture and color when you did that and i remember when i did some of the first like early drawings i totally forgot that that was the case and then i drew over part of it and i was like wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute i forgot that ballpoint pen does that and i kind of panicked and then you know once you know that that's a thing then you kind of work with it and it turns into something really cool so it was really fun for that to be the case um for these i i really liked the composition of getting these sets to just work together and become kind of like three individual pieces that work together like all as like one piece no pun intended <laughs> um and I was really trying to keep the shape of the body without adding too many clothes on top. Um, I almost kind of, when I, when I put some clothes on her, and to call it clothes is kind of, <laughs> kind of a, an exaggeration there, you know, it's kind of generous to call it clothes. Um, I kind of regretted it and you'll see me there kind of trying to undo what I did because I just like did not like that direction. I kind of liked like how nice just the bodies looked on their own. And even the middle one, I don't remember if I, no, I didn't undo it, but I, I even the middle one, I considered removing the, the bra and the panties just because it all looked so nice. It's just raw bodies, you know, with the little flowers and marks on top. And here you'll see an extreme change in quality um, for the, for the recording, I used different cameras. So hopefully here you'll get a better look at what each piece looks like and the quality without it being so blurry. But yeah, this was a set of pieces I really, really enjoyed. Probably one of my favorite sets out of the Inktober um, from last year. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it again this year. I'm kind of feeling slightly nostalgic and excited and seeing these really makes me want to <laughs> partake again this year. Inktober is always a good excuse to create a fun set of drawings, create themes if you're into that, like just theme drawings, do sketches, use ink. It's just a good excuse to do something that you've been wanting to do and putting off for a while. So if you're that sort of artist, I highly encourage to just come into October, whatever it is that you've been putting off, just use October as an excuse for 31 days of undivided attention. And so, yeah, this next set is going to be fruits. I have no idea where I got this inspiration. I truly do not remember. And I don't know, I just kind of went with it. It was another three days that I didn't draw. And at this point, I don't quite remember when it started, but I do know that at some point I was purposely like missing days because I truly liked doing the sets. And even though it's kind of cheating, because the whole point is that you're supposed to be drawing daily, yeah? Like that's the whole point. Um. And there is an argument that I could just draw like, you know, like a one per day and just still make it a set. 
but I don't know if there's any artists out there that feel the same way, but I just can't, I can't draw just one and pray, like draw then the next one and then the next one and hope that they all look good together as a set. You kind of got to like draw them all like at the same time and then just like work on them together so that they flow the best way possible. Not that it's do like not that it's not doable the other way, but me personally, I just have a really hard time because imagine being good at art, right? I can never. So, yeah, I I can't do it. So, I kind of like subconsciously started missing like days um and sometimes purposely I was like, ah, like I don't have to do it today it's fine we just do it tomorrow and that way we'll do a fun set it's gonna be fine and so yeah so i got this fruit idea and i kind of really wanted to go and remain with like the monochrome like the black and white with splash of color i think that's like one of my favorite like sketching styles where i just do you know either black and white with pencil with ink um even ink and blue kind of like on the right where i did black black and white i guess black being replaced by blue and then the bright splash splash of color so that's kind of i think that's probably where i got the idea i don't know how i got fruits but here we are and so i also tried to use colors that i didn't really use yet and so on the right we have Effie, and then in the middle we have Yotaro, and then on the left is going to be Rada, we're not there yet, but it's going to be Rada. And for Rada I use purple, Yotaro I use green, and then Effie gets red. And red I think I had already used, but Effie, like if you, if you see my comic, um and like know anything about it and have seen her before i think there is literally no other color that i can use for her other than this i was like okay even if i've used this color i truly just have to stick to it because it's the only way it's truly the only way um yeah and so this is the pen that i was telling you guys earlier about that's kind of like a gel pen um but it's super super thin it's like one of my favorite pens and I remember that I got, I got random story. I got introduced to this pen because I think I'm pretty sure I was in Japan and I found one on the floor, like just randomly. And you know, I mean, maybe that's gross. I don't know. But as an artist, I don't know. I just saw it and I was like, free art art supplies i see a pen and i lose my mind i see anything that i can draw with and i lose my mind and i decided to just pick it up and try it and when i tell you that i fell in love instantly and mind you i went the last time i went to japan was i want to say like three years ago and ever since then i always restock on these pens because they're just so good maybe i'll just throw it up on the screen i think it's called um what is it high tech I think it's called high tech C and then I think it's in 0.3 or 0.03 it's the, the I think it's the smallest one but it's so smooth and I think for those of you that really really enjoy um small tip um pencils or pens or markers or anything I know you probably struggle with getting the ink especially pens getting the ink to come out consistently like you know like without having to shake it without having to tap it and when i tell you this pen is literally so perfect for that like i can't believe with how thin the tip of the pen is that the ink comes out so consistently so thick so pretty and when you do the the really fast lines for those of you that use the really thin microns because i love those as well and those are great those are amazing but if you're looking for like fast lines that still have like a good chunk of ink in them i truly cannot recommend this pen enough it sounds like i'm being sponsored by this brand but i promise you i am not and it's truly amazing so yeah definitely check it out 
I do think, I don't know that I've updated my Amazon list of like all the supplies that I use, but I'm gonna check. It, it is like an affiliate, like the, it's affiliate link. So yeah, keep that in mind. But um, I don't know. I literally just remembered <laughs> that I had that. So I'm gonna go check right after this to, to update and see if I could just like throw, throw the, the supplies and stuff in there if you guys are curious. But yeah. So you start to see me play with these like bright colors, see how the colors start looking together. And honestly, green is is not one of my uh, top colors. It, it's definitely not. But there are th there's just something about like this, like very like not neon, but like this happy, like bright green that I really, really love. And I have a lot of art supplies that lean into that because I, I really like that. And so I, I think I just used this as an excuse to use those colors. And there was an old Yotaro drawing, which I don't know if it was subconscious, accidental or something. Maybe I'll throw it up on the screen. I don't think I posted, reposted that video on YouTube because it was unironically the, 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 the coincidence, right? or or maybe it's not but i did uh an inktober uh i want to say a couple years ago where i drew yotaro in green as well the same thing black and white splash of green and um i'm wondering if just subconsciously i started tying yotaro to, to this color and just doing it that way but yeah if i throw it up on screen you guys will see how like what are the odds what are the odds but yeah, I, I really started really like just liking this. I don't even know what to call this genre. I know there's a like genre for this sort of uh, pattern, right? Like all the fruits and like just tiled kind of. Is it like retro deco? Like what is it called? I, I know it's called something. Chat. Help me out. Uh, chat. I'm calling you guys chat. Oh my Lord. <laughs> Help me out in the comments down below if you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm pretty sure. There is a name for this, but I was really, really enjoying it. Just kind of like doing the black lines, not caring about the overlap. And in fact, having the overlap kind of enhance how fun like the patterns were and stuff. And I don't know, I just kind of like really, I just kind of really enjoyed this like sort of lax, no, no thought, brain off, draw whatever comes to mind. And this was just what was coming to mind and it was just kind of working. Sometimes you wing it, fake it till you make it and it just works out, um, especially when you're having fun. So just send it. And I think I've talked about this before where I did it for the slam challenge where I would draw just the first thing that came to mind and not say no to it. And I think that's like such a good exercise for having fun if you're ever struggling and you feel like you're overthinking when your art and you just like are tilted, your art blocked or whatever. I mean, I always recommend that you just pick up a pen, no eraser, pick up some markers. No eraser just helps you only move forward and not backwards. So not only that, but draw and whatever your brain comes up with, just say yes and just do it. And it just feels so good to be really free and just, just moving forward at like this, you know, and not even worrying about like whether it comes out good or not, just kind of moving forward at like no stop, like just no breaks. And there's something about that, that at least for me personally, really inspires me and motivates me to just try new things and kind of explore my creativity and just have fun with the process. And there were some, in week one, I think that I talked about that I, I did that with, and I wasn't super happy with the result, but the fact that I did it and I listened to myself and I just tried it either way made me really happy. So I don't know, sounds kind of, sounds kind of foolproof to me. So, and now just watching these really reminds me of that. And I think I need to, I need to just continuously remind myself to to do that you know sometimes you need reminders sometimes you think like certain things are obvious but we really do need reminders sometimes so here we're working on rada and i remember i was on pinterest looking at like some patterns i'm pretty sure of this sort of thing and um i got a picture of a girl with some beautiful braids and beads 
and I was like, oh my God, what if I made the beads grapes? And I was like, this is perfect. Cause I was looking for like clever ways to like include the fruits like in the actual drawing. And I was like, wait, this is so cute. And I also got that one picture from Loish. Do you guys remember the famous, like, I mean, all of Loish's pictures are famous because let's be real, like queen shit, right? But the old picture with the, the oranges, I think, or the limes, do you guys remember? Maybe I'll throw it up on screen, but yeah. And I just got really inspired and it was like a culmination of all those things. And this one kind of makes me really sad because I feel like I just couldn't do the braids like justice. Like I really wanted them to like have a lot of motion and flow and it just like did not do what I wanted but the drawing still came out really fun. And like I said earlier, I did not say no to myself and you'll see me get there, but I end up taking out some old screen tone paper that I had. And I was like, how am I going to use this on this? I don't wanna ruin this drawing. I didn't use the screen tones for the other two. And I really had to convince myself of the rule that I set. I'm like, I really wanna use the screen tones. Stop worrying, just do it. And if it comes out good, it comes out. And if it doesn't, it doesn't, just do it. And so I decided to do it. And some parts were really hard, like they didn't come out too good, but it was just so fun. I'm really glad that I did it. You'll see me here using a kitchen knife because my, um, my the the razor that i had was just not functioning so this was the only thing that i had in my arsenal at the time and you know that some of these kitchen knives are just so sharp and i i'm using some screen tone paper you'll see my head kind of pop in the frame i'm so sorry but yeah i was using some screen tone paper that i was gifted by my friend i and she had gotten in japan like ages ago and she was like, well, I'm, I don't, I don't need these. I don't use them and I want to get rid of them, but I know you're an artist. Maybe you'll be interested. And I don't know, like the shelf life of screen tone papers. And I don't really use them. I've used them only like a handful of times in the past. Definitely nowhere near enough to be experienced with them. As you can see, <laughs> it was really hard to get like into those corners and make it look like all clean and perfect, you know? But either way, yeah, it was just, I think it was a combination of like maybe the age of the paper. And then on top of that, I'm using a very scuffed razor. I'm not using an X-Acto knife. And then on top of that, I wasn't familiar with how the texture of the paper was affecting like the screen tone. And so it wasn't sticking in some parts. It was kind of like being weird. You'll see me like, kind of realizing that I didn't shade part of her skin. And so I had to lift it and then repaste it. And I was just, oh man, remember when I said you wing it? And then here you'll see me on the first one. I regret it. I put that first stroke. You see how it's kind of darker than the rest. I was like, oh my God, this color is so dark. It's not like the fun, rich, like dark purple that I wanted. And so I had to just pray that the next one would be the right color. And then it started bleeding into the lighter purple on top. And I was just so like, oh man, I was just so like, I was fine. I was like having fun, but it, it this drawing could have been so much prettier. Like how I saw it in my head was just so much prettier. And I was so tilted that I couldn't do her justice like it was in my head. But either way, it's so cute. I think like, a lot of the drawings in this sketchbook I would love to take into Procreate and now that I'm commenting over these which by the way it's almost been a year since I've drew these I, I've drawn these so I'm kind of re-experiencing these drawings with you guys and oh my lord I just like it's just reminding me how much fun I had with these how much I actually want to go in and like touch them up on Procreate, add some extra fun colors. And I don't know, like, I'm just, I'm kind of excited now. <laughs> but um, yeah, and so I, I, I will have a link in the description 
for a scanned version. I scanned the whole sketchbook and I'll be putting it on my on my uh, shop at artbynips.com. I'll have the link for that down below if you guys are interested in not just supporting because obviously like the funds do help there will be a sketchbook tour so you won't need to buy it to see the whole sketchbook tour but if you're interested in supporting or just seeing like the the whole sketchbook in high resolution then you're more than welcome to get it there and i truly do appreciate if you do that so hopefully you guys enjoyed that this was so fun um it was just fun experiencing this with you guys but <laughs> um yeah i'm gonna go ahead and also put the affiliate link for the amazon uh list of all my art supplies if you guys are curious what i used again my comic offsellcomic.com i'll put the links down below it is 18 plus please monitor that it's being revamped right now so don't worry the chapters will be out again um, updated really, really soon, hopefully this month, and as well as my store, artbynips.com, with the scanned version of the sketchbook. And look forward to the sketchbook tour coming after this video. There will be no speed paint for week four, like I said, but you'll get to see week four in the sketchbook tour. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Click like if you like the video subscribe join the nippy family the more the merrier and let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below and i will see you guys next video bye